Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra, a proud Fintrammer and your faculty for Strategic Business Reporting exam. Welcome. Welcome friends, welcome to the Strategic Business Reporting Revision Bootcamp. A big time step my friend in your journey of becoming an expert in the SBAR exam. Now that you have covered the entire entire syllabus areas and we have gone through the all of the IFRSs, now is the time my friend to really go through and start doing the questions in relation to the same. One of the most important pillar of an exam like SBR is that it really warrants you to not only know the concept but also to practically apply that onto various cases that you may get to see in the exam. And that's what we intend to do in the revision bootcamp my friend because now we are shifting off, we are shifting off the gears to really really go on to the practicing mode. Now what we will do is we'll try understanding as to how the exam would look like and then we'll start practicing the questions as they would look like in your exam. What we have done is that we've created a big time pool my friend for the questions that you may may get to see in the exam and of course that covers the concept, the comprehensive, the exam standard as well as the past examination questions just to give you the flavor of how your exam may look like. Is that something you are looking forward to? Yes sir. Should we start off with that? Yes sir. Alrighty. Now if we really go and start off with our first step of the revision bootcamp, the first and the foremost thing is to understand the exam structure. You cannot, cannot succeed in any exam my friend, any exam for that matter, if you have not, not known the exact structure of your exam. And if we really have to talk on the strategic business reporting as an exam, we have a specific structure over here wherein your exam is being bifurcated into two sections. We have a section A my friend that basically covers two important areas. We have one question in section A that is generally of 30 marks, can be less but generally it is of 30 marks that covers what? That covers the consolidation issue. We have done the group accounting at last my friend, we have done a lot on the group accounting. Now he would be testing us on that in the exam in terms of asking us the various various perspectives over the group accounting. What he generally does is he gives you a group accounting question which may not be that detailed one what we are used to in terms of consolidating the financials but he would ask various aspects of the consolidation, various aspects of the group accounting in that. That is what we will be covering over here in detail. But one thing that I really want to pen down and I really want you to remember is that one thing that is very prominent in SBR is that over here calculation is less but what examiner really wants us to do is the discussion, the suggestion that he needs, the recommendation, the explanation and what not. He is more interested in that than seeing your calculation abilities. Is that clear? Yes sir. The second piece that we have, the second piece that we have in this is on the ethics issue. We will get one question in the exam my friend that will deal with the ethics. Something not happening rightly in that case, in that company, in that industry and what not and you as the strategic business reporting guy have to pick that up and answer that in terms of getting that examiner know that you understand as to what really feels right and what really feels wrong and if it is wrong you are not running away from mentioning that and answering that there and then so that examiner really understands that. We will be covering that and of course getting on to wherein you will get a situation where something is not right and you would need to recommend on the right way to correct it. These are the two very important pillars my friend that you get to see in this section A wherein you would be tested on the group accounting and he would certainly give you one case that deals with the ethics my friend. The second piece which is the ethics question my friend is a very easy one in the exam. Most of the time these are the low hanging marks in the exam and that is what we'll be covering I would say in depth when we'll step on and get on to the ethics issue. We will be also talking about the exam technique that you may need to understand from the ethics question standpoint of course from all of the question standpoint when we'll start dealing with that. Is that clear? Yes sir. Then comes the section B. Section B have two questions my friend which are primarily dealing with various multiple IFRSs. 
we have 25 marks being allotted to every each question over there totaling to 50 marks of this section you get two questions of 25 marks each and all of that and both of that are dealing with the multiple IFRSs. Now when I say multiple IFRSs what does that mean? There can be a question wherein he would give you various scenarios various issues that would be relating to various IFRSs and you being the strategic business reporting guy have to comment suggest explain and whatnot onto those IFRSs onto those issues explaining that what has not gone right over here and what is that that they really need to do in terms of what the IFRS really says. So effectively you are guiding over there in terms of what is the right course of action and so on and so forth and of course you would keep in mind as to what the requirement of the question is but important is that you should understand as to how the overall framing is gonna be looking like. Is that clear? Yes sir. Now comes the last piece of it. In this one thing that examiner loves to ask you is the current issues. Recent is gonna be the must. Many of times my friend you would find examiner asking you on the current issues and that is gonna be the first thing that we will kickstart in a revision bootcamp because we'll touch upon various current issues that ACCA has issued in terms of you knowing them as to what is really happening in the industry. Many of the times IFRS takes time to get into the shape and of course get enforceable but before that there are various other pronouncements and of course various other enforcement that the body really does in terms of you implementing and knowing as to what is happening in the industry and how it is being shaping up and considering that what is the accounting standard body in terms of their thought process in terms of their understanding and what is that they're really doing on to it and that's what they do that's what we would be talking on when we'll be talking on the current issues many time examiner gives you one or one or one question in the exam or at times two questions in the exams that really talks on the current issues in terms of you know what is happening in the industry so that he can test you that are you aware of the recent pronouncements developments and so on and so forth we are fin trammer sir we are not gonna be leaving that untouched yes my friend that's why we'll be covering all of those current issues in detail in the revision boot camp then we'll jump on and start practicing the questions is that clear yes sir the one thing that i really want to kick start with and i really want you to have that as the base is the exam technique that i am now now really gonna be talking on because that is gonna be the mantra is gonna be the base my friend on which we'll build the entire empire of the strategic business reporting revision bootcamp shall we go and check that yes sir alrighty moving on to the exam technique that we have while attempting the exam do not please please no do not forget the concept of fd me and you sir fd me and you what does that mean for the folks who have been seeing me from the financial reporting sessions they would know that in the financial reporting sessions i've been categorically talking on the fd me because fd me was something that was very much relevant over there from their examination standpoint from the strategic business reporting standpoint i get the you i want the you to be added on to that because FD me you is going to be the super important thing from your examination standpoint. This is the mnemonic my friend that you can say to be trademarked by Pankaj Dhingra to really help you in terms of sailing through this exam. Where F stands for the focus my friend that I want you to have on the exact requirement of the question. When I say exact requirement of the question what does that really mean? Many of the times my friend and you would see when we'll start practicing the questions and start really solving the questions ourselves you'll see that there are many requirements at times in the single single ask by the examiner so he would give you that you know this is the case this is the concern and that has requirement number one two and three or a b and c and within the requirement number a also he would give you many many different requirements multiple requirements being given in a because he would want to ask a as an a.1 a.2 a.3 without even mentioning that separately there are multiple tasks being involved in it that is the reason focus on the exact requirement in terms of what he is really looking at is gonna be the game changer i keep keep saying that and you would see me keep reminding you and telling you again and again that fd me you is gonna be the super important thing
is that clear yes sir that is the first and the starting point wherein i want you to really focus focus on what focus on the requirement of the question as to what the exact requirement is what the exact ask is so that you're aware in terms of how and what you really need to give back to the examiner already moving on to the second i would say the most important piece which is the date the date in the question, the date for which the information is being given, dates on which transactions are happening, date on which he is asking you the detail to be given, whether it is the statement of financial position, whether it is the statement of penal, whether the comprehensive income, the statement of changes in equity and whatnot, and of course the journal entries, whatsoever. Those dates is going to be the super important thing for you, my friend, to really know what information I have on what date and what is the date I'm reporting on so that you can take care of the expenses, the depreciation, the taxes, the journal entries in between this time frame so that you're aware that if I really need to report on to this date, I have to bring this information on to this date to really report on to that. He loves playing playing with this because he would give you some information on a particular date and he would ask an information on a different date and that's where you really have to have a very strong eye in terms of knowing what dates are being given for which information so that you can really capture that in the best possible way is that clear yes sir date is of supreme importance draw the answer considering the dates given in the question do not miss on the exact exact dates like the dates d has one more meaning to it wherein also give due emphasis on the denomination of the figures in thousands in millions in billions and whatnot always have an eye on that at times he gives you one figure in million another figure in thousands and add on the different and uh, maybe a different figure in the full absolute amount you have to be very much aware with that he would like to play with it we are fin trammer we have to catch this up and answer that in one particular currency. You would take up millions, I would say millions, in most of the cases you will take up millions and start answering that or in thousands and start answering that. Do any and every calculation in the exam in one, one denomination, which is one, either it is thousands or millions or billions or hundreds and whatever, but follow the one denomination. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Denomination of figure is important. See million, thousands, hundreds, etc. See what is in it and what is needed in the answer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Is that difficult to know? No, sir. Very small, small things, my friend. But this FT, me and you, I can tell you, has done wonders for the students across the globe. This has been a tried and tested approach, my friend, that has helped various students and I'm sure this is really going to be helpful to you. That is the reason we are right now building that before really starting off with the questions so that you can have that in mind and by the end of marathon, this would certainly be in your blood so that you're completely there prepared from the examination standpoint. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on to the M, that is the memorize and map out things to write as per the basic IFRSs. Many of the times, my friend, you would see a question in the exam that would be related to a particular IFRS and that is a straightforward one. You don't have to apply big time mind onto it. It's a very straightforward one. You just have to know that you need to understand the basic IFRSs and those basic IFRSs are to be written. In fact, in various IFRSs question that you would see that will come in, that will come up your way, you will understand that I'll, I keep saying that over there that you should always start off explaining the basic IFRS. Then you should explain and overlay this IFRS considering the case. You should overlay this IFRS considering the case you have, the situation that you have, talk on that, relate to it and then answer it. But the first and the foremost step is to memorize, to know the basic IFRS and of course write it over there that's why this m becomes very very important this was f d and m coming on to the e my friend that is i on the time i think this is something you should never miss on you really need to have the eye on it because at times you miss on time and that effectively means that you have not been able to answer the entire exam that is something i would i would really don't want you have to have to have to 
always always have a watch in terms of you know what time you're taking in terms of you know solving a question and we'll tell you in terms of you know how much time you should be really thinking about and of course taking for each and every question you have to have a close eye on it so that you don't miss on that sbr is an exam my friend that can give you marks for each and every step you write over there and that is all the more reason that you should not should not miss on any question in the exam you should always attempt all of the questions in the exam and of course try giving any and every step that you can do at that point in time or take at that point in time and then examiner can give you marks even if you have not solved the complete question is that clear yes sir now this was ft me my friend and this is something you would have already seen if you're coming from the financial reporting framework and of course the discussion that we have had in fr you would know this because we have discussed that there too but one thing that gets really added on in the SBR exam is this you, my friend, because this really makes this exam different from the financial reporting. The first and the foremost thing is that you need to ensure, my friend, that you discuss, suggest, conclude, explain. Only calculation is not going to help like you may have done in financial reporting, wherein calculation was the, was the big time ask. Over here, calculation will be smaller, my friend. You're not required to calculate too much or give the huge financial statements consolidated one to the examiner. No, that's not going to happen. You may have to give at times he may ask it, but generally the calculation is less in the exam. What is more in the exam is you have to comment. You have to suggest you have to, you have to explain, explain the right course of action, explain what is going wrong explain what one should be doing in that kind of scenario, explain what IFRS says, explain what conceptual framework says and so on and so forth. That is something you really need to know and you really need to work upon. This being a practical exam, we at times feel that we will just prepare the financial, we'll just do the calculation and we'll move on. That is not going to be happening over there. You have to, of course, you have to make some calculations in terms of, you know, arriving at the figures, but calculation is not going to be giving you the complete marks. You have to really interpret, analyze in terms of, you know, what is happening and then comment, compliment, suggest, explain in terms of, you know, why it is the way it is and why it is the way it should be. Please, please do not miss on that. You have to comment on that. This is not the financial reporting exam. You would have to learn the art in terms of, you know, how one should be really commenting in a practical question, analyzing that and so on and so forth. That is something you will learn, my friend, as we go forward in the entire revision bootcamp, that this you is going to be of the big time importance. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And coming on to, oh, my friend, open to surprise, my friend, in the exam. Definitely open to surprise in the exam. You may get to see a question in the exam that you would not have seen anywhere. You may get to see a case in the exam which is very new to you. Very new to industry because examiner loves to give you something like that. He would always loves to give you something which is very much new in the market, new in the industry, new in the country at large, new in the world at large to ensure that you are able to think through in terms of, you know, how would you deal with that kind of scenario is not only testing your IFRS skills over there, but he's testing your presence of mind. He's testing your patience. He's testing your ability in terms of dealing with those kind of scenarios, those situations and so on and so forth. And of course, taking the help of conceptual framework, taking the help of IFRS is how good you are in terms of handling those reporting nuances that you would get to see my friend when will you will step into any kind of a job in the industry and that's what he always always does we will be getting on to it and you will see various questions that will pick up have that kind of a flavor be it a current issue my friend he loves to give that or the criticism of the IFRSs that we have discussed at the end of the chapters. That's why, you know, you would see various chapters that we have covered. They have some topics in the end, which are more of a theoretical one, but I always, always read through all of that just to give you the flavor because the examiner loves to ask that content. He's not asking you only the only and only and only the practical stuff. He asks you those small, small things, those small, small changes that are coming in the IFRSs those small, small criticism that I have spoken on onto various IFRSs and so on and so forth. He loves to test you on that. So do not, do not skip over that. All right. The changes in the industry we spoke on, apply the conceptual framework and the common sense, my friend, 
and just move on. We'll talk more on that because many of the times the general, I would say logics of what you have, the common sense that you have can really make you sail in this exam and you should never, never miss on that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And coming on to the you. I personally feel you is something that we all should be doing and at times we all miss upon. Let's say we have a case in the exam. We have a case in the exam and that is especially, uh, let's say specifically talking about, let's say revenue recognition. I can write two pages of revenue recognition if somebody will ask me the principles of revenue recognition because I know I have done, I have seen that IFRS, I can talk through that, I can live that and so on and so forth. But in the exam, he is not testing you in terms of you knowing the IFRS, you are knowing the revenue recognition, he would presume that you know it. What he wants to understand this is that can you, sorry, can you apply that that IFRS is onto the case that is being given in the question. Can you step into the step into the shoes of that industry, of that CFO, of that controller, and see through as to what is going around, and then talk through from his perspective as to what should be right, considering the IFRS in your mind. That's where you becomes very important. Understand and apply your knowledge to the case given and make it relevant to the ask. Make it relevant to the ask always always i would say ensure this my friend whatsoever you're asking whatsoever you're writing in the exam should be very much relevant to what the examiner is asking as a requirement do not forget on that application is gonna be the key to conclude my friend you cannot just give the verbatim of the ifrs you have to be having a rationale in terms of you know what you're saying why you're saying and of course why what you're saying is being relevant over there that is the reason my friend this you become super important from the SBR exam standpoint you have to talk more you have to comment more you have to analyze more you have to explain more the calculations are not going to help you in the exam or i would say not gonna be giving you 100 percent of marks in the exam certainly they would find they would form the base on which you will comment you will explain but that is not going to be the all is that clear yes sir coming on do the justice to all section my friend i have said that the both a and b sections you have to give the justice of both leaving one section half done is not right which is gonna be a dreadful thing my friend if you if you do that because many of the students what they do is they become emotional to the group question and spend good amount of time there and of course in the end when they don't have time one of the ifrs question is is, is gone untouched and that's where they really, really struggle in terms of clearing this exam. Not doing. You should not be doing that. You have to attempt the all, I would say, all of the questions of the exam in the best possible way as to whatsoever you know. You should certainly attempt that. There are marks for each and every step. Do not, do not miss that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Coming on to some of the tips, my friend, that I have from the time management standpoint, because I think this is one of the things that you should certainly have at the back of your mind before you really go and sit for this exam. The first piece is that you should know that the SBR exam is a three hour, 15 minutes exam. We all know it. That's not a news to us. But what we really need to know is that half of this time, I would say third three hours is the total exam time 15 minutes let me keep, let me keep separate let's say for revision or catching up to some of the issues that may come in the end let's say it's a three hour time frame that you need to distribute in between the section a and section b i would say section a which is the group question and the ethics question should have at least at least half of the time you should at least spend one and a half hour on to section a and one and a half hour on to section b that's the first bifurcation i have and then comes to you know a level down i would say for section a we should have 50 percent of the time and then 1.8 minutes per mark is something something acc also says and i would reckon to that 1.8 minutes per mark is something that you should be spending on if you're not able to do a question in that time frame move on to the next one my friend and start attempting that start attempting to the best possible way please ensure we are not gonna be leaving any question untouched in the exam 
Is that clear? Yes, sir. For section B, again, 50% of the time, I would again say 1.8 minutes per marks is something that we should be spending on. This is going to be the must, my friend. You have four questions to be, to be dealt with in the exam. Section A has two, section B has two. Let's bifurcate the time of 1.5 hours for section A, 1.5 hours for section B. And then, of course, you know, you can work backwards in terms of, you know, how much time you want to spend on. I would say relatively 1.8 minute per mark is something that really fits in onto any exam that you will pick up. And that's what you should be really working on with. Is that clear? Yes, sir. With 150 minutes, <clears throat> sorry, 15 minutes, it's not 150. With 15 minutes of buffer that you may have, it's not 150, please pardon my. It's 15 minutes of time that you would have from the standpoint of buffer or revision that you may need to have. And then go for some easy marks first, my friend, and leave the space blank and move to the next one. At times what happens is, generally speaking, the ethics question that you, that you see in the exam is an easy one to pick up. And I can tell you with what all experiences that I've had, I have always suggested that one should really pick up the ethics question first. If you know it, why not to pick it? But if you know the IFRS question, let's say for example, just pick up the IFRS question first. The easy, easy going question or you knowing the question is a big time advantage. Pick that up, solve that in one go. Leave the space blank for the other one, solve it that. And of course, you know, you can come on to the first one or the second one later on. Do not, do not go and just start attempting from question number one, despite the fact that you know question three much better than one. Always go for some easy marks, easy marks. If you get it, that really gives you the confidence and the boost, which you really need in the exam, my friend, for really doing well over there. And of course, really passing up with the flying colors. Is that clear? Yes, sir. I would again say this, do not miss any question, my friend. Give your best shot. There is no negative marking here. There is no negative marking. You should certainly be talking on and of course, giving your best shot to all of the questions that you may see in there. And of course, I would say do the working notes, do, do the steps of each and every, attempt each and every question as much as possible, as best as possible to get the marks of each and every question over there to whatever extent possible. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, I would again say in the end that FD, me and you is going to be the mantra, is going to be the mantra to clear the exam. Please do not miss on it. This is a tried and tested approach, my friend, which many of the students have taken benefit of. And of course, you would see as we go further, as we'll start doing the questions, this is the approach that we have been following and we have been following in detail in terms of really capturing the questions in the right, right manner. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now that is what I wanted to cover my friend. Now we will be stepping on onto the revision bootcamp. We're starting off with that. What we will do is that we'll start off with the current issues first in terms of really getting on to the core, you know, current issues as to what is really happening in the industry. We'll talk on the current issues in detail to start off with. Then I really want you to practice some concept questions. I've taken these questions, my friend, from various sources that I really want you to have as a concept being built on. You have to have these concepts in place to start handling the exam standard and the past examination questions that we would now going on after this start seeing on to. This is a very important, my friend, you would see these questions, you know, I would say being more calculative and being more, I would say revision sort of a thing, more from the financial reporting standpoint, this can be a revision to various concepts and the questions that you may have dealt over there. But it is important because I picked up specifically for building some strong concepts for you to really help you in terms of coming up with the flying colors in the SBER exam. So we'll start off with the concept questions, then, then we'll move on to the section A questions, my friend, wherein we'll touch upon the first thing first would be the group accounting piece will touch upon the questions more from the exam standard standpoint and of course past examination standpoint. We'll see as to what kind of questions you may get to see in group accounting. And if you get to have one over there, how should you be handling that? After that, we'll move on to the ethics questions. I really want to spend time over here because there is an approach that really works in the ethics question. We'll be talking on that as a technique and then we'll start solving the questions on the ethics in terms of you know you knowing as to how the past examinations has been 
and then we'll move on to the section B my friend wherein we'll pick up the IFRSS questions wherein we'll deal with various issues that examiner has been pushing us to really fight for and of course work for and we'll be talking on these issues and of course learning the best way of answering it in the best possible way considering the FT me and you into consideration this is something I'm not letting you forget my friend and you would see me talking on this in each and every question that we'll attempt in terms of giving you the flavor as to how FD me and you is gonna be the super important thing but I can tell you one thing we'll practice a lot my friend in this revision boot camp we'll do various questions but one thing that you really really need to always ensure is that you should be practicing these questions by your own hand you should just not be listening to the videos practice as much as possible my friend by your own hand in terms of solving these questions solving even more questions taking from the past examinations and for where from various other sources if you want to but practice my friend the more you'll practice the best you are from the preparation standpoint we'll try giving you various flavors my friend in this revision boot camp but i really want you to practice by your own hand to really excel and of course kill this exam in the best possible way is that clear yes sir shall we now start off with the revision boot camp yes sir all righty now that's what i wanted to cover here now we'll see you i'll see you in the current issues to start with in the revision boot camp till then this punkas dhingra signing off